Hello, uh, my name is Howard Jan, and I'm going to talk about React VR, a virtual reality framework built by Facebook this April, April 18th of this year. So it's only two months old. So first thing you might think of, virtual reality, it's a little daunting, you know, it's a whole 3D world. Um, it's a 3D world and, you know, this 3D objects, how do I do anything with it? It might be a little daunting to like, you know, start diving into it. But I'm going to break it down to you into four components. So maybe, maybe after this lecture you can start uh, kind of diving into playing around with the basic four components, interacting with it. And it's just like React. You'll get, you'll, I'll analogize it as much as possible and kind of take it step by step in a sandbox format. So first I want to start off with asking why React VR? Well, if you're Casio or you love React, then you'll love everything about React VR. It's pretty much the same format. You have all that de de declarative power. And if you ever want to reuse a lot of components, then um, React is really good for that, to reuse component objects and anything else you need to do. It also uses WebGL and WebVR API libraries. These are kind of the standard for the virtual reality. WebGL allows rendering in the 3D, uh, rendering 3D objects in the browser whereas WebVR is an API library that really allows you to engage with the virtual reality headsets. Uh, React VR also enables hot reloading. So if you're making incremental changes, um, let's just say you have an object that you, want, you don't know where you should exactly put it, you know, 10 meters in front of me, 5 meters in front of me, you know, you're, you just want to play around. You don't want to refresh that browser every single time. Instead, hot reloading kind of takes a look at your code, oh, you're just changing this little snippet, let me just re-render just that object instead of having to refresh and reload the page, re-render all your objects, re-render your scene. So it's pretty nifty. And if you needed another reason, new is always better for anyone who watches How I Met Your Mother by Barney Simpson. Barney Simpson. Uh, quickly going over the technical stack, first we have the browser, then we have WebVR which is really allows you to engage in functionality with the virtual reality headsets and WebGL, which is kind of the standard uh, rendering for 3D in the browser. Then in the JavaScript libraries, there's 3.js uh, from Andrew's lecture. It allows for advanced 3D model, modeling of objects and also they have a lot, a ton of animation libraries. Um, and over wrapping that, there's OVR UI. This kind of provides a lot of control for rendering scenes. And lastly, we have React VR. This allows for developers like you and me to just kind of have simple interactions in, within the 3D um, virtual reality env environment. So it, it'll be really easy to code. It's the same thing in React. I'm gonna start with some basics. So I want everyone to take their right hands, um, kind of take their first three fingers uh, have the middle finger pointed at yourself, your right thumb pointed to the right, and your index finger pointed straight towards the ceiling. This is the right-handed coordinate system. All these three, uh, your three fingers are the positive axes. So your right hand, uh, your right thumb is pointed towards the right. That's the positive x-axis. Um, your index finger is pointed up. That's the positive y-axis. And your middle finger is pointed towards yourself. And that's the positive z-axis or so, uh, think of it as units towards you and anything in front of you is uh, negative units or away from you. Um, distance in React VR is measured in meters and rotation is measured in degrees. And if you take a look at the snippet of code at the bottom, this just places an object three meters in front of you. To get started, you'd run npm install React VR CLI. This is the command line interface, which allows you to run React VR init. This kind of creates a boilerplate for your project and really just sets up all the framework and it runs npm install for all the required modules as part of your project and really sets up a nice boilerplate. If you run npm start in localhost 8081 slash VR, you get a hello world rendered in 3D. Some of the basic components, we have view. This is exactly like a div. Um, this acts as a container. Um, you can style your container. You don't really have to do anything with it but it's exactly like a div. And for text, this just renders text into the 3D world. And we have Pano. This one's a new one. It's short for panorama. Um, this renders an image or several images to create that 3D world. Lastly, we have an app registry. Um, this just registers your root component so that you tell React VR, oh, this is where I want to start re uh, rendering my 3D world. Let's talk a little bit about styling. Um, 
a style as an attribute you can put on any React VR component. Um, there's quite a ton of options. You have color for your text. You can put change positions. You can change rotations. Um, it's just to keep your code dry, you want to use object.assign, especially if you're going to re reuse a lot of objects. Um, and you just want to change one little attribute, you can use object.assign object to just keep reusing that same um, style. Here's a little example of Hello World I created. Um, those, and you'll notice that I just put a, just a bunch of text rendered out in every direction, saying here's the front, here's the back, here's the right, here's left, here's top and bottom. And if you notice in the code snippet, there's an asset function. Um, this is basically when you initialize your project, it creates a boilerplate with a directory. And in that directory, there's a static folder that's created that you're more used to. This is where you can kind of put all your objects, your pictures, and running the asset call instead of, you know, trying to find the directory or path.join. You can just call the, uh, you can just call that uh, file or object or image with just the file name. Um, what you saw before in this chess world, this was an equal rectangular image. It's just the 360 panorama image with an aspect ratio of 2 to 1. Um, this is just one image file. But if you've ever worked, if anyone's ever played with Unity, um, they use a lot of cubic maps. Uh, and the, all this is is if you took six sides of a cube and you had six different images in those, on those six faces, you can pretty much render a world in itself. And I can show a quick demo of that. So I went, to an, I went online to an image creator website, just made six, six squares of images, and then I just put them all together in React VR. It looks like this. Made you look. <laughs> but if you look, uh, I just scrapped something quick together, and um, yeah, you can create an easily a create a 3D world. Just. Next, I want to talk about events. They're exactly the same uh, events here as in React VR, or in regular vanilla React. You have your on click, on enter, on exit. There's also on move and on input. And if you notice in the code snippet, um, for the on enter, this says this.animate in. I just wrote a quick, uh, this is just a quick function using an animate library that React VR comes with. So if you just import this library from React VR, that comes with a lot of animating functionality. And if you take a look at this real quick, um, here's my demo. This is a new drawing. And you'll see on the right side there are two cloud. One's happy, one's not. Um, if you hover over the cloud, that's the on enter triggering, which animates and really just pushes the cloud, uh, raises it up a little bit. But if you exit the cloud, it goes back to its original position. The on click function, if I click the happy cloud, it'll render a new panorama image. So you're in a much happier environment. But if you click the angry cloud back, you're in this dreary, kind of slightly depressing drawing. <laughs> Lastly, I want to talk about models. This is the fourth component. Um, this is a little more complicated. You can find models to download all over the internet. And all this is is. Um, it takes, uh, for the model object, when you import it, you want to import the object itself and any materials it comes with. I would just think of this as kind of, you know, what textures and what things you actually want to put on top of your object. So um, if you want to, you know, the object itself is the shape and the actual uh, kind of, yeah, the, that's the actual shape, whereas the materials are what's overlaid on top. And inside this materials file, you want to direct, you want to, right at the right code snippets at the bottom to direct where your different materials are. Also, with 3D models, you want to engage this, them a little bit more. You can make them rotate. You can you know, interact with them. So um, this will involve a lot more state changes. So in this quick example I made, um, I imported another cubic map. And on the right side, I have a model of the planet Earth. And it's just rotating. And ev all this is doing is the state the state's looking at the date and the time, and every time it changes, it rotates just a little bit. And hopefully, this doesn't seem too complicated, and you know, it's enough to get you started on VR. Thank you. <laughs>